Hello, ALS Canada Revolution Riders. It's Mike here yet again. Hopefully you're not sick of me by now. We're ready to give you another strength-based workout. This is one of my favorites. I hope I haven't said that for another workout before. Otherwise, you're not going to believe me. But this truly is one of my favorites. It's called Angry Birds. Angry Bird. Singular. <laughs> I should probably figure out the name of my favorite workout. But Angry Bird is a strength-based workout with three pods. And I think you've had the, the pod formation at this point. So you should understand we have five stations in each pod, meaning you're going to work through that pod. It's going to be one set at each of the five stations, three laps of those five stations. And I'm not going to go through the details of timing, but all you need to know is it's going to decrease in work time for each set. And that will allow you to keep pushing your, your muscles uh, to the very edge until uh, you've done that pod. Um, other than that, the cool thing about Angry Bird that I like is it's broken down by upper body, lower body, and core. Now, in the studio, that's exactly how we run it. We'll find out if our coaches are running that with you exactly as it's meant to be happening. But all you know, as I'm sure you've probably figured out by now, these are full body workouts that are going to push you in one way, shape, or form and get you ready for your ride. Have fun, and I'll see you next time. We got Angry Bird today. Angry Bird has 15 stations. They're divided up between three pods. Each pod has a focus, and we'll go over that in a second. The timing, one set at each station, three laps of each pod. First lap is going to be 40 on, 15 off. So think of it as like a practice lap. We're going to learn the exercise, refine the technique. Lap number two is going to be 35 on, 20 off. So that's the one that we're going to go real hard at. Make that your hardest lap today. It's less work than the first lap, more rest than the first lap. Attack that one. Third and final lap is a short one, 20 on, 10 off, where we take the weights that we were using and we up the ante, maybe add a little bit of speed on that. We will guide you through it. Pod number one is all legs. Pod number two is all upper body. Pod number three is all midline. All right. Here are the demos. Pod number one, station number one, is going to be a dumbbell loaded squat of some type. You can have them up in the rack. You can have them down in, the, in between your legs, whatever you would like. All right. Then station number two, we are going to try some pistol squats today. There are lots of different ways we can do this. We can use a box and grab a seat. We can use a bench or a couch and grab a seat, but we're gonna try a pistol squat on one leg. All right, then we have a reverse lunge with a shoulder press. So we're gonna take a set of dumbbells or a bar or a ball or whatever you have. We're gonna hold it up, hold the split, and then press the bar or the dumbbells up and over our head. Then at station number four, we have a four point hold with a leg extension. So we're in the four point hold. And then you can see that's more of a hamstring loaded leg extension. So we're rocking back almost into a down dog. Love that drill, awesome. And then we have a squat. As Olivia wrote it, a squat plus a curl plus a squat plus a shift. So there we go. <laughs> I like it. So squat, curtsy, squat, and then a quick step over and back. Love it. Love it. Pod number two, good mornings. So we're going to start with some good mornings. We're going to take a ball or some dumbbells. We're going to squeeze it nice and tight to the upper body or put a bar on the back. We're going to good morning. And then we have an alternating rotational row. This is kind of a T-stab style row where we're going to bring the dumbbell all the way up to the ceiling while keeping the other hand planted on the floor with a good back position. It's a beautiful exercise when it's well performed. Then we are going into a push-up where we will add a little bit of variety mix it up, have some fun, but let's work on a good solid push-up. It's always great when you get a chance to just work at a push-up for a little bit. Then we have a lying subscap drill where we're gonna be lying on the floor, fully extended, and we're basically mimicking a pull-up motion, right? So pretend you have kind of bands in your hands and you gotta pull them into your body when we're doing that. And then to cap off pod number two, we have front raises. So we're gonna take dumbbells or a bar, or a bag, whatever you have. And we're gonna lift it up on the front of the body, keeping just an ever so slight bend in the elbows. That takes care of pod two. It's gonna bring us into pod number three, which is all focused on the midline, the abdomen, low back hips. And we're starting off with leg raises with a twist. So a standard leg raise. And you can see there's just that little bit of corkscrew type activity where Olivia is just rotating the hips at the top. And then we're going into plank, Hop. So we're going to flip over onto the front of the body, 
on the forearms, low plank. Feel free to try this from the high plank as well, which would be the hands. And station 13 is going to be an ab crunch with your legs raised. So the legs are going to be above. You can see Olivia's knees above the hips. That upper or lower leg angle is totally fine where she has it because the knee is above the hip and we're pulling the shoulder blades off the floor as high as we can. We have two more, some rotational work from the high plank position and we'll mix this one up too and we'll play around with the positioning and challenge you in a few different ways. And that leaves us with one at station at number 15, the always effective bird dog. Olivia is doing this from the true four point with her knees elevated. If you struggle with it, we can go down to all fours. We can put the knees on the floor. Lots of different ways we can challenge you with that one. Those are your 15. Give yourself a bit of space. Let's get warmed up. Remember, this is your warm up. So follow the, uh, you can follow the plan here, but also pay attention to how you're feeling. And if you need to loosen up anything, make sure you give whatever is bothering you or feels particularly tight a little bit of love. And let's get it going. I think we're starting with A steps. I might be wrong though. I might be wrong. It's nope. <laughs> I need some duck kicks. Man, these sun, these weekend warm-ups, I have no idea. I don't They're know. Always, always different. Always. Yeah. You think you have it and then they change it up on you. And prisoner squats. <laughs> And then I think it's a lateral lunge coming up. Let's see if I'm right on this one. Let's see if I get it. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Let's play this game, Olivia. What's coming up next? Ooh. Um, I want to say it's like a intro. Frog squat. Frog squat. Frog ah, squat. Okay. Yeah. Because they don't ask me. It's always different. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have a lot of the same ones, though. Now, now it's going to repeat, I think. It's going to be a bridge, glute bridge with a leg extension. There we go. And then, like, we're rolling it out, I think, right? Yeah, then it's going to be a rock and roll. All right, a little rock and roll from the shoulders and the neck all the way to the butt. And I, I, you probably heard me say this, guys, but do not be afraid to put a bit of weight on the back of your head. Okay. It's there to be used. People often avoid using their neck at all costs. It has muscles too. They need to work just like every other muscle in your body. Let's go into a spinal roll. It's basically a down dog to an up dog. And you can see Olivia rolling through the length of her spine. So right from the cervical spine all the way through the lumbar spine like a cat. And then staggered. I want to keep watching. You, you do that very gracefully, Olivia. That's, that's, that's oh. lovely. All right, and then uh, staggered, oh no, inchworm to push up, inchworm to push up. I forgot one. Andrea, sorry, I made you stand up. <laughs> oh man, nothing worse than that. And now we got to stand up because we have a staggered squat. This is going to be the last exercise in the warm up, and then uh, let's have some fun today. There's a lot of good opportunity to do some creative lifting. A lot of different variety. Nothing's going to get boring. You only see each station for a about a minute and 30 seconds of total work time and grab some dumbbells. We're going to do a dumbbell loaded squat and let's see if we can get a bit of weight right out of the gate here. Let's make this set challenging. Okay. Don't ease into it. If you're feeling warm, let's go. We're going to go down. We're going to hit the kill switch at the bottom just for a half second pause. I don't care how long it is, but let's not rebound the squat. Let's go down, follow Olivia down, kill it, stand. So just for a moment, stop that change or stop that directional movement so pause it and move yeah olivia's got it right now let's see it andrea a little longer andrea just hold for right and then up good beautiful hanan good work yeah bailey good work looks like you got some good weight in your hands victoria look how cool you look with sunglasses outside the dog yeah hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> five seconds all right, guys, we're moving next into a pistol squat. So it's quick transition, 15 seconds. But the good news is all you need is either something to sit on or if you can do pistol squats, you don't need nothing. You just need yourself. 
All right, so watch what Olivia's going to do here. Follow her along. She's going to stand on one leg. The free leg goes out in front. The butt goes back. We sit on the box or the step or the chair, whatever you're using, and then you stand off of it. Andrea's got a single leg squat. That's a good option. Yeah, Victoria, nice job. That looks real good. Nice work. Good job keeping the heel down. That standing foot, guys, that foot that's planted on the ground, that heel has to stay down. Okay, it'll bugger up your knees real quick if you're loading the ball of the foot. It just puts all of the stress right through the patellar tendon. You don't want to do it. So keep that heel down. Squat through the center of the foot. Victoria, still rocking full pistols. Nice job. All right, take a break, and we are going to move into the reverse lunge with the shoulder press. So you got to grab a set of dumbbells again. We're going to step into a reverse lunge. We're going to hold that lunge. We're going to put the weight over the head. So dumbbells, bar, ball, whatever you got, use what's around you. Step back, hold the lunge, good firm press, back in, and then step in. Pull the dumbbells or the bar or the weight back into the body before you step out of the lunge. Bailey, good tempo. Nice work. Nicely done, everybody. Not a whole lot to say there. That was great. Nicely done. Four-point hold with the leg extension. So this is basically a four-point to a down dog. Back and forth. So start like Olivia. Okay, toes, hands, knees hovering the floor. Knees about two inches off. And then just extend through the knees and push the heels into the floor. Then drop the knees back into the four point. If you get this right, your foot position should not change. The feet are just planted. You're just dropping the knees in. You're rolling the heel down. You're dropping the knees in. And we're rolling the heel down, extending through the legs, stretching the hamstrings, pushing the butt back trying to arch the lower back. And one thing that you can think about that most people don't is the stomach position. You want to suck your stomach in. Okay, so watch when Olivia comes. You can see that concave in her ribs to her hips, right? Suck the stomach in so you can collapse the hips. Good work, good work. Take a break. And we are into the station five, last one in pod number one, which is, I'm going to let Olivia explain this. So this one we're going to work on the pause since we've got 40 seconds. So you're going to hold this squat, hold the curtsy, hold and put. Hold, curtsy. So then as we go, when the timing goes down for our work, we're going to speed this up. But for now, we'll stay nice and steady. And on this one here, guys, remember what side you're curtsying to. On the next lap, we're going to switch it. So you're going to be shuffling to the other direction. We're going to be curtsying over the other leg. So, for example, Olivia is curtsying on top of the left leg right now. So the next set, she's going to curtsy on top of the right. Take a break. We're back to the top of the pod where we are going to come out of that nasty one into another squat set. This time, we're going to add a three-second pause at the bottom. So you're going to go down. You're going to hit that kill switch for a count of three. Let's do it together on the first one. Get the tempo down and hold for three, two, one, and stand. Good structural squat. I want you to think about the weight distribution in the feet right through the center of the feet. Okay, that's where we squat. The weight's right through the center of the foot. So you want weight in the knuckles behind the toes, but you also want weight in the heels, right? We want a firm plant of the foot. And then you're kind of unfolding just like a lawn chair would in a perfectly vertical path. If you watch Olivia's dumbbells from the side, they move straight up and down. There's no forward and backward movement. They're on a straight line. Take a break, moving into the pistol squat again. If you did it the whole time on one leg, flip it to the other this time. It's only five seconds shorter. Uh, if you alternate it, alternate again. If you tried it with a bench or a box and you were successful, try taking the bench or the box away. You do not have to. Just make sure that you're comfortable with your single leg control. Again, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a flat foot on the floor for this one. You are far better off losing a pistol squat with your foot flat because you will safely just roll down to your butt. 
Nothing will happen. You'll drop down the floor. You roll onto your back. You'll be fine. Don't lift that heel, though. People hurt themselves lifting their heels on pistol squats. And nicely done. There's some great reps there. Good. Three. Number three, reverse lunge with the shoulder. Nope. Yep. Reverse lunge with the shoulder press. Yep. Alternating legs. Victoria, you did this a little bit different from everybody last time. You stuck with that split squat and you held it. So you're going to have to lead with the other leg, do the same thing. Or if you switch, switch. But yeah, just hold that position again. It's starting to get hot in here. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, it is pretty much perfect. I want you to do one small little thing. And I want you to lean a little bit more into your front leg. Yeah. Yes. Carry slightly more weight in the front leg than you are in the back leg. That's it. And then let your shoulder mobility carry the weights where they need to go instead of positioning your body so vertically. That was good. All right. We are back into the four-point hold into the down dog. Lovely stretch. Also a wonderful exercise too. Burns up the quads a little bit. If you've been doing those first three stations right, this will get heavy on the quads. Here we go. Nice and slow. Make sure those knees don't hit the floor. We're carrying them down so they're just above the floor. So we have that nice horizontal shin position running parallel with the floor. And then back up into the down dog. Bailey looks great. Good work. All right. And then we had that tricky little one where we're holding that half squat curtsy lunge into the lateral shuffle step. So we're going to curtsy around the other foot, shuffling the other direction this time. 10 seconds and we'll start it up. When I read that earlier, Olivia, I, I thought it said squat curl. And I was like, okay, that's straightforward. And then when you did that, I was like, where's the curl? I was very confused for a moment. But now I, I see like where I need to work on my wording. No, no, it was me. I like you, you got you got a T there. I, I misread it. No, but I knew it was just like the other day when I tried to explain that, like funky bird dog. I was like, I don't know what to say. So I'm just going to put a bunch of words in there. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, everybody called it. There's like 30 different names for every exercise. If you, <laughs> if you hang around gyms long enough, you're like, this is, you know, you have the same exercise is five different names. And that was good. Back to the top, guys. This is the tornado lap. We're taking all five. We're going to rush through them in 15 seconds. We're into the dumbbell squat. This time, we're taking all pausing out of the mix. We want 10 squats in 20 seconds, okay? 10 squats in 20 seconds. You can see the clock behind Olivia. One every two gets you 10. Here we go. Down, up, down, up. At least that pace, and we're good. Don't cheat your depth. Don't cheat your depth. Just be more aggressive with the squat. Get your butts down. Pistol squats are coming up next. So you won't need your dumbbells for those unless you're crazy and you want to try a dumbbell load of pistol squat. <laughs> then you're just nuts. Then you're nuts. That was something Adam would do. You could do a dumbbell pistol squat. Ooh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You carry one at a time. You can get really strong with those. I, I did a video last year. Where I did one with a 110-pound barbell. No way. That's yeah. And then we have reverse lunges with shoulder presses. Let's go in three, two, one. Here we go. Step back, push in, back. Step back, push in, recover. Step back, push in, recover. Keep that high pace. Keep that aggressive push off of the chest. Don't be delicate. Drive the bar in. Good work. Four point to the leg extension. So four point to down dog coming up in five. All you need is the floor. Three, two, one. Let's go a little quicker this time. Let's rush them a little bit. Still good technique. 
still focusing on our angles, right? Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders. How are we moving? Are we fluid? We're pushing through the heels into the floor. Everybody looks good right now. Seven seconds to go. It's going to leave us with one. That is that squat hold, curtsy lunge, shuffle step pattern. If you can mix it up and you have the room and you want to go side to side, give it a shot. We'll make it a little more cerebral this time. So hold the squat, curtsy, shuffle in, shuffle back, and then curtsy to the other. I'm going back and forth now. <laughs> you tricked yourself. I did. I did. <laughs> so I was like, I got to go both legs. So that's what I got to do. And take a break, guys. That's it. Well-deserved break. Fantastic first pod. You're pretty well done with your legs. We do have a good morning in pod number two, so you got a little bit of hamstring activity, but we're going to try and hold something heavy in the chest so we can kind of burn the upper body into the set a bit. So you can take a plate, you can take dumbbells, you can take a ball, a bag, a bar, and just let's hold something on the front of the body preferably something heavy enough that it kind of tests the bicep strength a little bit. And we're going to do a good morning. Nice little transition from the lower body to the upper body pod, kind of something that incorporates a little bit of both if we get it right. And then from the good morning, we have that rotational style row where we're following that dumbbell up to the ceiling, what's referred to as a T-stab row. All right, so good mornings. Let's start it. Seven seconds. Let's get back on the horse here. Three, two, one, and nice and tight to the body with whatever weight you're using. Let's hug it. Let's push the butt to the back wall. Beautiful hip hinge, and then slowly extend through the hips, pulling with the hamstrings, almost like we're trying to pull the floor backwards like we're on a treadmill, really engaging the hamstrings. And just when we come to the top, guys, one thing to note, uh, I often see it with deadlifts and good mornings. You're not lean back you're not trying to extend the back as much as possible just stand up and be comfortable right like if to stand up as you would just be standing in a room and then right back down again just keep the abs tight good postural positioning you got three seconds and then we are moving on to that rotational row so if you are limited in your mobility through the trunk i'm going to get olivia to start off with a modification okay so just start off with a standard rotational row olivia so she's just going to pull the dumbbell into the ribs and rotate. Okay, you can also do this from the hang if you're tight in the back and the floor seems too far away. Right there, you can see Olivia doing it. And now we're going to take it and we're going to do the planned exercise that Olivia came up with today. And we're going to rotate up to the ceiling in that T-stab position. Now, if you are trying this, Andrea... Vic, yeah. So make sure that we have some... Vic, look at Olivia's leg position. See how much bend she's got in her knees? Like, she's she's quite bent. No, don't widen your legs. Just bend your knees. Like, she's almost like she's sitting in a chair and you're with your legs straight. Yeah, right there. So you can cradle it. There we go. Nice. Take a break. All right. Now we are going into push-ups. No introduction needed. Push-ups. An oldie, but a goodie. Let's just be real. Life gets easier, and so does everything in a gym when you get good at push-ups. It's one of those things you just got to learn to do. Them. So let's use this as an opportunity to get better at them. Here's a challenge for you. See how far, and think about this, see how far down your rib cage you can get your hands and still complete a full push-up. How far down the rib cage can we get our hands and still complete a full push-up? Good. Take a break. We'll come back to it. Lying sub scat. Lay on your stomach. Arms above your head. We're going to elevate by squeezing the butt and the shoulder blades, and then we're going to mimic a pull-up. Okay, so let's elevate together, squeeze the butt, squeeze the blades, and then like we're taking a pull-up or a lat pull-down bar in a gym and we're pulling the bar into the collarbone. If you have the ability, and not many people will, but this is actually a cool way to 
pull up or get at least some vertical lat work in at home. If you have bands or a band, you can anchor it to something in front of you and you can pull it in from this position. And if you pin your feet under something or hook your toes on something, you can turn it, you can get some good resistance with it. Take a break. We are going into front raises. So you're gonna grab a light set of dumbbells or a bar, a light bag. You can do this with almost anything. You just gotta take some stuff and lift it up. It's about as straightforward as it gets. This is every teenage boy, day one, right here. It's so true though, so true. <laughs> And then they'll do a few bicep curls, pop a new vein out of their forearm and go home and take pictures of it, put it on Instagram. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this vein. Hashtag swole. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys are the worst, aren't they? There was this, <laughs> there's like this one vein, I don't know, that they all want that goes like down the neck and across. Yeah. I don't know why. And good mornings. Back to the top. Let's do it again. Everybody did this real well in the last one. If you next time you're in the gym, watch this. This is this is hilarious because it's absolutely true. It'll just you, the more people you watch, the more it'll prove my point. Guys are incapable of doing a set of bicep curls without at least once looking at their own arms. And watch, you can pick any guy at any time in any gym doing a curl, and I promise you they will look at their own arms at least once per set. <laughs> Trust me, you'll see it. Oh, I know, I know. They'll stare down, they'll like, they'll, even if they don't wanna look, they'll like look and then pull their head away. They'll try not to get caught looking. It's, yeah, it's amazing rotational rows again this one i love we got the positioning down pat by the end everybody was kind of tweaking it everybody was doing it anyway so let's really lean into that planted arm as we rotate to the ceiling okay so as olivia pulls the one arm up she's leaning and putting weight in the arm that's on the floor and that's going to help support the back and the hips and allow us to get a better position a more comfortable position victoria bend your knees a little more sit and now arch the back right there. Yeah. Imagine you're like a football player on the line, right? Like, yeah, there you go. When the first lockdown hit and I was doing a live class, you did that one. So that was why I got that idea. Ah, that was the first I like it. I, I love that. I love that row, but that's, I, that's interesting because I haven't seen anyone else use that, but th thank you for, uh, thank you for giving me the credit for that. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Push-ups. You didn't need to do that, but thank you. Yeah, that's no, a great exercise. I love it. Here we go. So keep going forward with that challenge that I gave you last time. Look at where Olivia's hands are. We got Olivia's hands down to the bottom of her rib cage. Look at that. I used to have a strength coach that when I was playing hockey that we did these styles of push-ups in a rep. You had to get the back of the palm, so like the heel of the palm where the wrist is, to touch the top of the pelvic bone. And that was a rep. You're almost there. You're only like, you're a half inch, three quarters of an inch away. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. That thing's like impossible. <laughs> it's cool, right? Yeah. Lying subscap. Let's pretend we're doing pull-ups. Cater your own resistance. As crazy as this sounds, guys, pretend that you're pulling weight in. Like, resist yourself. So nice and slow. Picture resistance against the back of your tricep. Okay? Not in your hands. Imagine the resistance is under the elbow against the back of the tricep. And we have to move that resistance and pull the elbow into the rib cage. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Front raises are next. So grab the dumbbells or the bar that you were working with last time. Let's put a uh, let's put a slight little bend in the elbow, and we're going to change this up. If you have a bar, 
follow Olivia here. You're going to come up. And Olivia, I want you to just tip it right, tip it left at the top. If you have dumbbells, I want you to turn them out, turn them in at the top. All right? Is that it? So I come up. That's it. You got it. You got okay. it. Kind of reminds me of if I'm about to go kayaking and I'm going to like swim. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, Bailey, I like what you're doing there. Ooh, I feel the difference. Good work, guys. Nice job. Nice. Andrea, you did. I, I like what you were doing there. I didn't want to stop you. The next time when you do it, imagine like you're breaking a stick, right? When you like, you're going to snap the stick and then turn them back. So instead of turning both like this, just open them up. Yeah. Like that. And then corkscrew them back in. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Good mornings again. Lap number three, this is the tornado lap as we referred to it last time. We're one after another. The switches are short and sharp. Everything's a little bit more aggressive. Let's pull a little quicker from here to the end. Let's drop and pull, drop and pull. Last rep coming up. Up next, we have rotational rowing. So we have that T-stab style row. You set it up twice. You know what you're doing. Lean into the arm, arch your back, get your butt down. And here we go. Let's get at least 10 in 20 seconds. Let's roll them. Let's go. Pull down. Pull down. Be a little more aggressive if you're comfortable with the position. Victoria, nicely done. Bailey liked the row. Hanan, same thing. Good. Good. Adjustment. And done. Up next, we have push-ups. Don't need anything. Just get down on the floor. Let's start together in three, two, one. Here we go. Stick with that challenging push-up, dropping the hands back in. Olivia, watch, try it. Just shift your body position forward a little bit and try and get to the top of your pelvis with the back of your wrist there and push. That's it right there. Oh, okay. That's good, man. Nice job. Line sub scat. Here we go. Pretend you're doing pull-ups. Lying on the floor. Resistance against the back of the elbow in three, two, one, let's fire it up. Let's pull these a little quicker. So pull, pull, pull. Pull them at the speed that you dream of doing pull-ups at. <laughs> if you could do 50 pull-ups, how fast would you do them? There you go. All right, and then we're going into front raises to finish things off. Do the same thing we did last time. Come on up, break that stick at the top if you have dumbbells or tip the bar, tip the bar. Three. Two, last set, one. You got a break coming up for a full minute. Let's burn it out. Yeah, Andrea, like it. Bailey, good work. Let's see it, Victoria. Break that stick. Woo. And we're done for now. Take a break. Only got one pod left. It's all abs, low back, and hips. Nice way to finish off a Sunday workout. You get to roll around on the floor for 15 minutes. That's not so bad. <laughs> not so bad. I like that this one just lets us focus on core. I feel yeah. like it's just nice to be able to do that. Definitely. Definitely. It's a good Sunday. Good Sunday vibe. Yeah. <clears throat> so the first one is the leg raise with a twist. Sounds like a cocktail. All right, so we're gonna bring the legs up. So the hips are at 90 degrees, a little hip lift at the top, and then a corkscrewing of the hips. Olivia, this is gonna sound weird, but can you do this with the top of your head facing the camera? Like the like, whole time? Turn to your left. You're facing oh. like, yeah, right there, right there. So that they can see that little turn. Yeah. So now you can see what she's doing with her hips, right? As she comes up, you can see her feet twist. Watch. She comes up, lifts the hip, and then torques the hips. If you have, if anybody has any, I'm just going to say this right out of the gate. If anybody's got any disc issues in their lower back, it's I, unlikely that someone does. But if you do, do not do this exercise. Make sure you're only doing this with a healthy back, healthy hips, but I love it. Yeah. 
you should be corkscrewing from the trunk as well, right? We're not lifting or not turning from necessarily the lumbar spine. It's a little higher up with a hollowed in abdomen. That looked really good though. Nice work. Uh, plank hops coming up next or walkouts with the feet are fine too. If you don't want to hop out, just step it out. Two, one, and here we go. Whatever plank you want, high plank, low plank. Good work, guys. Everybody's keeping a good hip position. Remember about that hip high, right? Planks are not meant to be parallel to the floor. It's a higher hip position than that. Stick it out. Four, three, two, one, and back onto our back. Crunches from a 90-degree position in the hip. So the feet are up. Three, two, one. And right now our goal is to get the shoulders off of the floor. You can see what Olivia is doing. She's not pushing her face to the ceiling and trying to stay rigid through the trunk. She's trying to articulate the spine vertebrae by vertebrae and curl her forehead almost towards her knees. All sorts of ways you can do crunches. There's a million different variations, but the one way that most people don't do enough of is rolling through the spinal column, right? Articulate that spine, vertebrae by vertebrae on the way up. Two, one, take a break. Three down, two to go in the first lap. Rotational high plank coming up. Three, two, one, and let's try it out. These are all slow and smooth. Okay, let's just go. Guys, all you're doing is rolling from the high plank. Just high plank, reach to the ceiling. Now, if you're game and you want to spice it up a little bit, let's try rolling right over into the bridge. So roll from the high plank into a basically a reverse plank. So just keep rolling over, Olivia, until you're in a reverse plank. That's it. Yep. Let's try and keep the legs straight when we do it, though. Let's go like from a high. A high yeah, I know I said bridge. Let's, let's try. I'm just watching you. Let's try going right into the reverse plank. Yeah, take a break. We'll come back to that. That'll be fun. Uh, bird dogs coming up. We all know those, right? Cross body, leg to arm extension from the four point position, knees hovering the floor, right under the hips, wrists right under the shoulders. So we have those vertical columns of bones, right? Femur running north south, humerus, forearm north south. If anyone can tell me what the two bones of the forearm are, extra points. <laughs> 14 seconds to go. Let's hold that leg extension and then pull it and then repeat on the other side. Bring out, hold it, and bring it in. And done. Nicely done. We are moving back to the top of the pod. We had the leg raises with the twist. Let's try forcing that rotation through the trunk, right? Let's force it through the trunk, not the low back. We're corkscrewing the entire trunk. I guess it looks real good. Yeah, not a whole lot to comment on there. Nicely done, guys. That was great. And plank hops coming up next. Or if you want to get fancy, hold a handstand or a down dog. If you want to stretch or do some inverted work, either a handstand or a down dog. Let's lean over. Let's get the head down to the floor and practice. 
basically just so we can all see Olivia do a crazy handstand. Nice, Andrea. Hell yeah. Andrea's got a handstand. Victoria's got a handstand. Whoa, this is – Victoria's held this the whole time. That's amazing. I think she beat you, Olivia. She probably did. I thought. <laughs> the, weird, the weird thing is, I honestly – I can't see her head. I can't tell if her head's on the ground or not. I'm going to have to ask her. And take a break. Good work. Hell yeah. Crunches with the feet up. Victoria, was your head on the ground? It was. Okay. Okay. I couldn't see it. I was like, damn, that is a ridiculous handstand if your head's not on the ground. <laughs> it got suspicious around the 30-second 30, 30 mark. That's when I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> peeling those shoulders off of the floor let's go up and hold it at the top hold it at the top as high as you can and then breathe in and out without letting the shoulders fall at all on the exhales don't let your shoulders drop and take a break rotational high plank. So let's go from the high plank, roll over into the reverse plank. So reverse plank is just exactly what it sounds like. You're up on your hands and heels right there. Okay, so rolling from the high plank to the reverse plank. Nicely done, everybody. Bring that hand right down, Hanan. You can bring that down. So just reach behind you and then hold. Yeah, there we go. And then roll over and then roll right over to the other side. If you have the space, try a few in a row. And just keep wheeling over. And oh, take a break. Fun. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great little exercise. Uh, bird dogs. Here's a challenge if you want one. I'll walk you through this. If you want, if you want to play along, follow along with Olivia. Let's hold the bird, let's hold the four point for a sec. Now extend into a bird dog and hold it. Doesn't matter what, what arm, what leg. Now from here, extend into a cross body down dog. So push the heel down and there you go. That's it. And then back into the four point and repeat on the other side. Cross body down dog, bring the hand what with it. Yep. That's it right there. Yep. Leg goes up with it. Woo. That was, that's a hard one. <laughs> Nicely done, man. Nicely done. Uh, where are we? Leg raises with a twist. Here we go. This is it. Final lap. This is the ninth of nine laps in your workout today. You only got five sets left. It's only a minute and 40 seconds of work. Let's pump these out. Two, one. Here we go. There still has to be a good measure of control. Even if we're increasing the tempo a little bit, you have to be careful with these ones because we're so quickly rotating the hips. If you're not used to that rotational force on the lower spine, sometimes it can get a little nasty. Coming up, plank hops was the original exercise. We turned it into a handstand or a headstand last time. You choose, but whatever you're doing, we're going in four, three. Good time to try a handstand. You're not breathing too heavy. Oh, no. You should take a cool picture doing that on like the edge of a building, Olivia. You'd go viral. All right, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ab crunch with the legs up. Let's go. Let's go. Final three sets, everybody. After this, we have that rolling high plank and then a bird dog. 
So the rolling high plank next, feel free to do it the same way we did it last time. High plank to low plank. And if you have the space, as I said, see if you can roll over a couple of times and just keep it going. Control your momentum and just roll to the side. Keeping the legs straight. Here we go. Let's see it. Keep going. Roll. Olivia, look at that. Hanan, good work. Victoria Bailey, that looks nice. Nicely done. Andrea, good work. And take a break. You had that down pat by the end there, Olivia. That was good. Yeah, it was, once again, the fun. Bird dogs, feel free to try that single leg version that we did last time if you'd like. And that's it, ladies gents. Ladies, no gents. There might have been a gent in the back in Bailey's. He popped into the frame every once in a while. I can see somebody, somebody back there. All right, guys. Let's get uh, stretched out here a little bit. And uh, Olivia will take you through a few minutes of stretching. Feel, stick around if you have the time, guys. It's always a good thing to do after a workout. And uh, we'll see you later. All right, you guys. So we were on our wrists a lot today. So let's just start with like little circles with the wrists. And roll them in the other direction. Let's stretch out the forearm. So I'm just pressing my palm with my hand. And from here with the same arm, reverse, press the hand towards you. Your palm is towards you. We're stretching the front of the forearm. And we'll switch. And then flip that palm facing you, press the other side. Good, we did some push ups. Let's open up the chest nice and proud. So from the side, my chin is lifted, palms to the sky. And we're gonna clasp behind, drop those shoulders. Again, if you have a job where you have to sit all day long, if you do this stretch every couple hours to open up those shoulders, because we're used to being hunched over on a computer, this is a great exercise for that. Good, let's get into a four point crouch. So my elbows, just like if we were to do a frog squat, my elbows are on the inside of my knees. I'm just going to rock side to side. And let's straighten out the legs, reach for the floor. So you can see I have a slight bend in my knees. If you want to hug yourself and sway. Good. And just bend into that squat again and straighten it out. From here, you're gonna go back into a lunge. Have your hands resting on your knee. If you want a little bit more, reach up to the sky. You're pushing this hip forward. Good, then switch. Other side, knee to the floor. Start with our hands resting above our knee. And then when you're ready, reach up towards the sky, push those hips towards the floor. Good, bring in the feet. Straighten out your legs as far as you can. Again, if you want to sway, you're gonna slightly bend, roll your way up nice and slow. And there you go.